In this presentation, we're going to show you how to set up data buffering for opcsystems.net with the product feature opcdatabase.net, which can log to SQL Server, Oracle, Access, MySQL, and CSV files. Data buffering can occur both at the data source where the values are coming from and also the destination of where we're logging the values to. That could be either a database engine or the CSV file. To set up data buffering, we'll use the configure application found under the program group opcsystems.net. Select Configure OPC Systems. Under Configure Options is where we'll enable the data buffering feature. First we'll select the service that we want to configure. I'm going to select Localhost to configure the local service. If we page down we'll find the data buffering group. To enable data buffering it's very simple. Just select the property called Store Data Logging Buffer to Disk on Network Loss or Database Engine Failure. Then specify a directory where you would like the data buffer files to be stored. If you want to limit the data buffering to a particular time period, you can enable the property Limit Disk Buffering. If you'd like to buffer data at the data source when a remote data logging service is stopped, you can enable the property Buffer Logging Data on Remote Logging Service Shutdown. Once you have enabled the Store Data Logging Buffer to Disk property, you can then select Apply Changes in the lower right. You are now set up for data buffering. Let's test that. I'm going to set up a data logging group under Configure Data Logging. I'll select the service that I want to configure, enter a logging group name, and make the logging active. I'm going to use the continuous type, but the buffering will work with all of the types, whether it be event-driven, specific time of day, data change wide table format, or narrow table format. Then under Tags, I will define what it is I'm going to log. I'll select a few OPC Systems.net tags. You can also use direct OPC tags to access values directly from an OPC server if you'd like as well. Then I'll specify where I'm going to log the data. I'm going to log it to SQL Server under the Database tab. From the SQL Server Management Studio, I'll grab the server name. I'll set up a new database and a new table. I'll also set up some CSV logging under the CSV Logging tab. I will specify the directory where I want to log the data and a file name. I'll then add that data logging group to the configuration. Using the SQL Server Management Studio, I'll view the database, the new database called new DB, and under tables I have a new table. Now let's query that. And there we have our records being logged to the database. We also have a CSV file being generated under the directory we specified. There's the base file name we gave, data, along with the year, month, and day appended to the file. Now let's test some of our data buffering capabilities. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the database engine and I am going to stop the database engine to show you how that it buffers data. Let's note the time that we're stopping it. It's at 9.13 and 12 seconds. Now if we take a look in the directory where we're buffering data, we see our first buffer file with the extension DLB. Now it is also important to note that you can actually stop the service while data buffering is occurring and then start the service back up and it will still be able to bring back all of the values before you stop the service and after the, you stop the service. This allows you to shut down the computer. Of course while the computer is down you won't be buffering any data but if you had enabled that f feature on the data source and you have a remote service that has data on it and we're just logging values from a remote service and that would be done under the tags property when we add a tag we would select a remote service here for example if I choose the internet connection from a server in Texas I would include the IP address network node name or a registered internet domain name like we have here in front of the tag name just like we have double backslash network node name and then backslash so if we're doing that the data source service as long as it's running and connected to its data source it will buffer data when the network goes down now we'll go back to the database engine and start it back up the buffer files that we have here will automatically disappear when the data is restored. These buffer files are processed one at a time at a 100 millisecond execution rate. So to the human eye, they move out pretty quickly, but if you're buffering data for, say, several months, you don't want to overwhelm your network or your database engine when the connection is restored. So it moves the values out of the buffer files in chunks at a time. There the buffer files have now disappeared. So let's go back to the database engine and let's requery that same table.
if we execute that, we can now go down to the time that we set at 9.13 and 12 seconds is when we shut it down. And we see that we have the values being logged for the time that the database engine was down. That's demonstrating when we have a database engine failure. Now let's take a look at the CSV file. If we open the CSV file with Microsoft Excel, by default it will lock that file and it we will not be able to log to it. Let's format the sales for the time so that we can see the full seconds there. So our last record that we have here in the CSV file is at 9.16 and 27 seconds. Now if we go back to our data buffer directory, we see that we now have a buffer file for the CSV file. So at the time that we have Microsoft Excel open with the CSV file, it is locked and so we'll be buffering file as long as that's occurring. Then we'll close the CS file and we won't save any of the changes. We'll see that buffer file disappear. Now let's open the file again. Again, formatting the cells so we can see the seconds. And if we go down to 9.16 and 27 seconds, we see that we have the next record at 28 seconds and all of the rest of the records as well. So you can see that data buffering is very simple to implement and also very robust as long as you're able to maintain a data source connection to the OPC server, the OPC client, the .NET application, the database, or Microsoft Excel. Those can all be data source connections for the OPC system service. If you'd like to learn more about OPCdatabase.net or any of the OPCsystems.net product features, visit the website opcsystems.com. Under the training page, we have a section for the database logging. That is under the section called opcdatabase.net training videos. There you can see how to log values to database engines and CSV files, how to update existing records based upon dynamic queries, and also how to implement high-speed data logging from a .NET application with 100 nanosecond resolution. If you have questions on how to implement OPC Systems.NET, select the Contact Us in the upper right and call us at 303-679-0898 or send us an email to support at opcsystems.com.